You remember the good old days of rock and roll? The Beatles, the Rolling Stones, began what's known as the, quote, British Invasion. And with them was guitarist Caleb Quay. But as Caleb told Scott Ross, in the midst of the rock and roll, the one thing he heard was a single voice. Caleb Quay entered the British music scene in the late 1960s. And one of the people that was a contemporary and an intimate close friend, Reg Dwight. <laughs> now everybody's glazing over when they hear that. But yeah. then he changed his name, so. To Elton John. It was 1970 when Caleb joined the Elton John band as lead guitarist, and there was no looking back. The first album titled Elton John soared to the top of the American charts. For 10 years, Caleb toured with Elton John, traveling all over the world. He was also a well-known studio musician who worked with rock legends Mick Jagger, Peter Townsend, Paul McCartney, and Hall & Oates. And the concerts in front of yeah. tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, that kind of heady atmosphere and that environment, how did, I mean, how did you handle all that? Uh... Not well. Not very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's no, not very well. Um, you know, we were young. You yeah. know, we were in our early twenties at the time when it all exploded. You know, so all the you know lots of energy and stuff, but also lots of drugs as well. Did you feel like you had arrived? This was it, and there was no more. That's a great question. You know, I, I, um, people used to say to me back then. They used to say, oh, Caleb, you've really made it now. Now, back then, we were doing, like, four-hour shows to, as you say, hundreds of thousands of people. You know, we were the first band to sell out Madison Square Garden for seven days in a row. And sometimes we'd come off stage and, you know, we'd be in a hotel or something. I'd look at myself in the, in the, the mirror. I still have my stage clothes on, you know. And I'd look at myself in the mirror and I would say, there's got to be something else because I felt empty. By 1978, Caleb was still playing night after night in sold-out venues. But that nagging feeling of emptiness continued. That year, he turned 30. After celebrating his birthday with his fellow band members, Caleb sat in a chair, stoned out of his mind. And all of a sudden, I heard a voice. Now, that sounds crazy, but it's like a voice out of nowhere just speaks to me. And this voice was so loud, it was, to me, I thought somebody had actually walked into my room. And I'm looking around thinking, oh, who's there? You know, couldn't see anybody. And the voice just very clearly said to me, Caleb, from this point on, your life is going to be completely different. Nothing's going to be the same for you ever again. Whoa. All of a sudden, I find myself no longer high on the drugs or anything. You were high when you were in oh, the voice. Oh, yeah, we've been on the road for six months. I mean, just, you know, and all of a sudden, I'm like, and uh, so I just sat there in that electric moment and just made a promise to myself. I said, one day I'm going to find out who that voice belongs to. Caleb's drug use continued, and eventually he was dealing drugs to supply his own habit. And from that point on, for the next like two and a half, three years, everything in my life basically that could go wrong, it went wrong. Huh. Marriage, finances, studio, everything like the phone's not going anymore. Everything just kind of got stripped away. It Crash was like and burn. Uh, yeah, it was like I couldn't, I, I was no longer in control of my life. Uh -huh. you know? And during that period of time, I met a guy, a dear, a dear guy, uh, became great friends. His name is Chester Thompson. Chester Thompson was and is a world class drummer. He's performed with Phil Collins, Weather Report, and Genesis. He asked Caleb what he believed about life. Caleb was desperate to find answers to his questions, so he agreed to go to church with Chester. And they kept singing this one song called, In My Life, Lord, Be Glorified, Be Glorified Today. They kept repeating it over and over again, and, and this song started to, started to do something, you know. And it was strange because I didn't hear all the lyrics to it. I only heard one word. It was like everything was in a fog, and I just heard today. And in the middle of all of this, the same voice I heard in the hotel room two and a half years or whatever previously speaks to me right there in the church and says, Caleb, it's time for you to come home to me today because I have a new life for you. You heard it that clear? Uh, that clear. 
that clear. 27 years ago today, as I'm telling you now, it was that clear. And the light went over and going, now I know who that voice belongs to. That's Jesus. The next thing I know, I'm up out of the chair, my hands up in the air like this. I'm looking at my hand thinking, how did I get up here? And I'm looking down here, my friend Chester and his wife were on their knees crying and praying. And so I just said, Lord, if you can do something with me, you can take me now. Whoa. And that's when I said, yes. Whew. The greatest yes I've ever said in my life. Caleb accepted Christ as his savior, and he heard Jesus telling him this time to be baptized. I went in the water, an 18 year drug addict, a mess, and came up with a brand new mind. Wow, you know. That day, Caleb was freed from drug addiction. Today, he's still making music and spending time with his family. He says it's good to reflect on all that has happened in his life. So I know Jesus not only as my savior, but as my deliverer and my healer, you know, and I came up there with just a brand new understanding, which has never left me to this day. And that is simply that God knew me and had accepted me and claimed me as one of his own. Caleb's music of the past and present is the topic of much conversation today. And so is his book, A Voice Louder Than Rock and Roll. In Isaiah 42:10. It says this, God speaking, I'm going to bring forth a new song yeah. that's never been heard yeah. in the heathen world. Yeah, oh yeah, a new song that has the power to heal and the power to renew, and that's it. So it's more in rock and roll, it's a voice louder than it's rock and roll. It's a voice louder than rock and roll on every level. It really is, yeah. What an amazing testimony. The young people went wild for the Beatles when they came to this country and gone wild for the Rolling Stones concert, packed up venue after venue. Same thing with Elton John, various other ones over the years that have come down the road. There have been so many of them. And almost all of them, it's something to do with sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I mean, it's just there. It's part of the scene. Groupies following after and throwing themselves on them. Uh, coke, marijuana, some heroin. It's playing to hundreds of thousands of people who want to listen to their music. But a voice came to Caleb, a voice louder than rock and roll. And the thing of it was, God took him when he was in the midst of that scene, that music scene, that drug scene, that scene of what we would consider debauchery, God reached out to him right then. But it took a couple of years before he got through, and, but then, and now you're gonna play music for me, now you're gonna serve me. You see, folks, Jesus is real, and he's greater than money, He's greater than fame. He's greater than political power. He's greater than anything you could possibly want. He's greater than romance. He's greater than anything. And there's no satisfaction in life until you're satisfied in him. You'll never find peace. Never will you know peace in your heart until the time that you rest in him. Great peace have they that love thy law. Nothing shall offend them great peace. Some of you are troubled, you want peace, and you haven't got it. And you say, there's got to be some way. Well, don't kill yourself. And don't kill yourself <clears throat> with whiskey. Don't kill yourself with drugs. Don't kill yourself with a debauched life. But turn to Jesus and let him make something beautiful out of your life. Now, if you want that, if you want to see peace, Peace with God, peace with your fellow man. If you want to be at peace right now, I want you to stop what you're doing, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just hold steady. <clears throat> and I want you to bow your head and pray. And I want you to pray these words. Mean them in your heart. Say them with your mouth. Pray silently or pray out loud as you wish. But pray right now this prayer with me.